This is Keyed In with Max and Brent, unlocking the minds of the industry's top real estate professionals. And now, here are your hosts, Max Rabin and Brent Jackson. Hey, everybody, welcome to Keyed In Podcast with Max and Brent. I'm Max Rabin. And I'm Brent Jackson. Brent, it's come to my attention that we were not DC's first real estate podcast. Did you know that? I did not. Please tell me more. Well, it's true. We really aren't just DC, though. We had Julie Susan from Boston. We had Kevin Brown from Manhattan. And we're branching out quickly. And we're actually switching up the name of the podcast to Keyed In. We're dropping the DC thing. But we're still in DC, obviously. Um, Yes, we still live in, work in DC, but we don't want to narrow ourselves here. And we, of course, have the heavy hitters in the DC market too, and you know that. So today is one of the megastars of real estate. He is crushing sales. I mean, like really crushing. I think I saw he's at 170 million for 2021, and it's only October. That is insane. I mean, what? His marketing is second to none. I've been learning from and attempting to copy uh, his ideas from his marketing for a couple of years now. Of course, it doesn't always translate because he's got it honed down. And imitation is the best form of flattery. So here's Daniel Hyder. What's up? Hey, guys. You are uh, a gracious host, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be here um, and, and talk to you guys. Um, I'm going to pull the curtain back for you. So... Uh, Thanks again for having me. And I just want to let you know that these fabulous M&Ms with your faces on it uh, will be enjoyed by many right. in the Hyder office. That's like uh, a secret of our podcast. You're telling people. So now they know if they come on the podcast, they're going to get branded M&Ms. Well, you know, or unless you change it up and surprise everyone, you know, every time. I mean, it could be a, it could be a different surprise every time. That's a great idea. And we'll get our entire group on that new candy every time. Keep them guessing. Keep you know? them guessing. I don't, chocolate will bring me back every single time. Yeah, me too. So, um, all right. So you've uh, definitely been on some other podcasts and uh, talked about yourself. I've listened to um, I listened to you on like Jer Metcalf and I think so, on Clubhouse. But for our listeners, we have to go over some origin story. So tell us where you're from. Where did you grow up? Start with that. So I... Uh, I grew up in the area. I grew up in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, I, I've been here for you know the better part of my life. I moved to um, Mississippi for high school. My father was a federal agent for his entire career, so he worked for the NCIS and um, uh, did a a little bit of like narco terrorism work. So I spent my high school career in Mississippi. I guess the latter wow. half of it, and um, I've been here ever since. I'm a uh, DC native, not many of us around. That's right. Well, I'm one of them. I Is am, that right? I, yeah. Where are you? Where are you from, Max? I'm from. <laughs> I was born at Sibley Hospital, and grew up mostly in Chevy Chase, DC. And then amazing. Yeah. I uh, fun fact: I was actually born in Naples, Italy. Okay. As I mentioned, my dad was working right. uh, for uh, the Navy in uh, sort of an agent capacity, um, but. Yeah, I guess I, I I could explore my Italian citizenship if I if I really wanted to. Well, you seem to get around, so I think you have time to. Yeah, you know. Sure. When, when did you come to the U.S.? Like, how long were you in Italy? I was in Italy for the first four years of my life. Oh wow! And and then oh, wow, made my way on back to Vir- the Virginia <laughs> suburbs. My grandfather was born in um, Capitol Hill in Southeast. Wow. And um, went to Eastern High School. Um, yeah. And then moved to the Virginia suburbs where he started his family. Uh, my aunts and uncle and um, all my cousins are, they're all in the Virginia suburbs. Yeah. When you say, if you say Eastern high school, that is some DC stuff right there. That is seriously DC. <laughs> yes, it is. We Impressive. used to grow up uh, driving my grandfather around in my family. There's no such thing as a nursing home. So my grandfather lived with me. And, uh, you know, he would, he had this really sort of gruff, raspy voice and he would say, let's get in the car and go down to Southeast. And he'd show me all of his, his, you know, his, his favorite restaurants. And, um, you know, we'd stop by like the police precinct and he'd point out alleys where he got into fist fights when he was a kid. And, uh, you know, 
the spot where he would, you know, sleep on the on the Capitol stairs in the summer during the Depression when they didn't have air conditioning. Uh, so yeah, pretty 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 cool guy. DC life right there. I love it. That's awesome. Very much so. I'm originally from West Virginia, as most people know, and uh, we're growing our family, our young family in Capitol Hill. So we're taking after the footsteps of your grandfather. We're on the 600 block of East Street right there at Easter Market, Barracks Row, walk down to the baseball stadium, remember the Capitol. So Uh, what if our guy has the same stories as you do? That's the best. I I, I hope so. DC is the greatest place. It's the, the Paris of America, as I call it. Absolutely. Well, I mean, wasn't it designed? It was designed by a Parisian. Yeah, so, Pierre Lenfant. That's right. Pierre Lenfant. It um, put it on the grid system. There's a yeah, book exactly. out there. I think we read it a few years ago. The, the grid system on how it's just like from Paris. Um, interesting. It was an interesting book. So, Daniel, when did you start in real estate? How How old were you? What was What was the beginning of your career like? Um. It was 10 years ago. I'm 34. Um, I started when I was 24 years old. Um, and I, I started as, I, I, I say, the assistant's assistant um, at Washington Fine Properties. Um, I was working in a restaurant part-time where the restaurant manager uh, was was a friend of mine. His name is Jason Mandel. He's a real estate agent right now in, oh, yeah. in, 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 uh, in D.C. Yep. And... He said, you know, you'd be a really great real estate agent. And at the time, I wasn't really taking, you know, life too seriously. I wanted to kind of figure out what my next move was going to be. I thought that it was going to be more in, in sort of a, a political capacity. I really liked uh, politics and, and I was kind of stewing on, on what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And, and he, at the time, he was working for a real estate agent. He had just gotten licensed and working for a real estate agent out in um, in McLean. And, and he said, look, you should just give it a shot. I wanted to go back. I dropped out of school and I wanted to go back to school. And before I put myself in a ton of debt, uh, the, the game plan was just to give it a shot. And one of my regulars who used to come in all the time happened to be my first referral source. And he referred a two and a half million dollar house in Potomac. And, you know, I'm looking around at, you know, all of my friends, you know, who are in their, you know, barely mid twenties, you know, working right. as clerks and working as interns. Doing whatever they can. And, yeah, doing whatever they can. And I certainly was doing whatever I could. Um, and, and, and while I didn't, you know, benefit monetarily from that first transaction, what I did benefit from was having my foot in the door. And learning sort of the, the the technical sort of mechanics of how a deal is done, and 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 meeting the players, and and at that point, you know, really kind of being in the nucleus of of what I considered to be kind of the stars of residential real estate. You know, yeah. I mean, at that time, you know, they're all all the big players were at WFP, and um, and so I kind of came up in an environment surrounded by. A lot of folks who were were, were very inspiring, um, and and ultimately that sort of path at Washington Fine Properties led its way to um, a, a very significant change in my career path, which was then working with Jeff Wilson, who's at our firm. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff and I were together for uh, about five years, and um, and 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 I'm here now. Yeah, I have a follow up question for that. So. I'm going back. You're 24 years old, and your first transaction pieced together is a two and a half million dollar deal. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. So how do because how do you get the seller to agree to work with you at such a young age? I mean, we have a lot of young listeners out there, and it's hard to get someone to yeah. trust you at 24 with a half million dollar place, and you're at a 2.5 million right out of the gate. And that was 10 years ago. So it's two and a half million 10 years ago is very high. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great question. Um, you know, uh, my my main role. I figured out that that the easiest way to, um, you know, sort of leverage an opportunity like that was to not really talk about myself at all. I had no ground to stand on. I didn't have a track record, and as a matter of fact, I wasn't even licensed. It was referred to me. I was not even a licensed real estate agent at that time. You know, mm-hmm. I was the coffee boy. I was the guy that just kind of hung around the office. I didn't get paid when I worked for, for Jason. So, um, you know, I would, I was working in a restaurant at the same time. So I would, you know, 
work my lunch and dinner. And if I had the morning off, I would drive to the, you know, the office and I would just kind of be in the atmosphere. And, you know, I learned very quickly that the way that I would, would learn at speed is to kind of leverage the, you know, the already established apparatus around me, which at the time was Jason. So I basically became Jason's hype man. I was the guy that was going around and telling everybody that I knew about Jason and telling everybody that I knew about, you know, how great he was and, and, and how great the firm was and anything that I could do to activate my social network and, and to have Jason come in and then lock that business up is really how I got my, my, my footing. And for a lot of those younger people that are listening right now, who are maybe they're starting out on a team, maybe you know, they're looking or listening to this right now. And, and look, it, 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 it all started by me looking at my toolbox and figuring out what I needed to use in order to make something happen. Mm-hmm. And so you know, you're not going to be Brent Jackson when you step on the field for the first time or Max Raven. You're just not. But if you have the, um, you know, if the opportunity to be on someone's team like that or to be associated with someone like that, you can easily leverage that person. And then by way of, of, of being in proximity to that transaction, you know, understand how a deal is done. Well, that's essentially how I started my career, too, working with Jonathan mm-hmm. Taylor. I mean, he was uh, I mean, he's still a, obviously a very important person in our real estate market. He's yeah. one of the owners of our company. And uh, when I first started in the business, he was, um, you know, real estate was the market, as I've mentioned before, it was very small in DC back then, comparatively compared to now. And there were only really a handful of super top agents, and he was one of them. So I got yeah. to, I was right in there in the office with him, in the car with him all the time yeah. from the beginning. The most valuable days of my early career were, were not, um, you know, were, were, were not glamorous days. They were the days where, you know, I was literally holding Jeff Wilson's cell phone, like over the shower while he was on like a <laughs> conference call or sitting, sitting in the front oh seat of his car, listening intently to every single <laughs> word that was coming out of his mouth. And, and then trying yeah. to sort of deduce from the bits and pieces of the conversation that, that was in my atmosphere, what was happening. Like, like nobody, guys, I, it, it blows my mind because real estate is such a um, entertainment sort of, uh, it, it, there, there's so much entertainment around real estate right now. There is and, now yeah. and the funny thing is, is that when you watch these shows, Million Dollar Listing and Selling Sunset and on and on, I mean, you very seldom ever hear the word contingency, right? Yeah. When was the last time you inspection. heard Josh, Josh Flagg talk about a radon inspection totally. contingency, right? When was the last time that any of these people showed you the, you know, 67 page legally binding document that you signed, right? When was the last time anybody went over a general addendum, right? It doesn't happen. Right. So there is a, there is a ginormous learning curve. And so the value proposition for me was being in the room with people like, you guys and like Jeff and 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 like Jonathan and all the stars that I just revered and looked up to and um, you know that 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 was really transformative for me. Well, I'm really thinking about though, just like what you were saying. It's like that show would be really really boring if they were like, "Listen, we need to negotiate <laughs> yeah. a seller credit <laughs> yeah. for this retaining wall." Yeah, the show would be what, off the air in a second. What do you mean you don't sit at Cipriani all day and drink martinis and just do deals in the middle of a restaurant? Right. Yeah, and I'm having I mean, a maybe you, you might though, Dad. You, you might. <laughs> you, and I'm having a flashback, thinking that um, Jeff Wilson is Mel Streep, and it's Devil Rails Prada, mm-hmm. and you're like, you know, this is so and so calling, and this is he, totally. know, married to so and so with so many kids, and this is a house. Absolutely, I was. You know, listen, I will tell you that my if 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 I if I weren't in real estate, if I hadn't figured this path out, I would probably I, I would have been an amazing, um, you know like body man or, or, or like personal assistant to some like tycoon, because I take great pride in keeping people organized and knowing who the movers and shakers are. And, and I, I loved doing that for Jeff. I mean, in one of my favorite memories of my early career working with Jeff Wilson was, um, you know, like I told you when, when I was working with Jason, you know, activating my social network to where when, when people would think of me, they were, they weren't thinking of, you know, Daniel Hyder or Danny Hyder, as most know me, um, you know, the, the, you know, whatever the, whatever they, they, 
th their mind had programmed, um, you know, me to, to be in connection with, mm -hmm. but to be, you know, Danny Hyder, the real estate agent in connection with Jeff Wilson. And we, we would have lunches, multiple lunches in the same restaurant where we'd have a lunch at 12 and then they would come and they would change the tablecloth and they'd reset our drinks at old Ebbett. And then we'd have another lunch with another, with, 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 with another group. Right. And they didn't know that. But I had set it up that way. It was just a. It was a. It was just about contacting as many people as yeah. possible. I mean, yeah, I. I loved. I, I have to tell you that was so much fun for me, um, because it really makes you think in a creative way. Now you know I've got you know, thankfully I've got you know wonderful resources to help me pull things together. But we we did some really inventive kind of grassroots. Um, social activation you know i remember burning hundreds of cds and uh you know designing a like a little picnic checkerboard invitation on top of the cds it was a jazz cd and an invitation to jazz in the garden right or jazz in the park i forget what they call it at yeah. the you know the sculpture garden yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and it's a free concert right, right. and so we we, I created this, uh, this invitation that was on a CD and then I got all of Jeff's contacts and I went to their office and I handed them the CD. And when they came to jazz in the garden that night that we invited them, we, I went out and got like a big, huge thing of Popeye's, but I put it in wicker baskets and like, like table Dress cloths and yeah, I, I and, and, and like, pictures of sangria that I poured into that I had to buy one by one because they'd only let you buy one at a time <laughs> and pour into this like, you know, and silver. It is so grassrootsy. It's so like, but let me tell awesome. you it worked. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and it was, it was that, you know, kind of um, experience that I had the opportunity to have where, you know, Jeff gave me the runway to be creative and, and um, you know, think things happen from there. I love that. So, you know, we have a pretty good sized team here at the office. And so you're coming from Jason and you're coming from Jeff and we're seeing it on our team where people, it's time for them to graduate from the group, go out and do their own thing. Mm -hmm. When was it time for you? Like, when did you see like the writing on the wall? Like you want to go out and do your own thing? You know, um, the truth is that I didn't want to. Um, I really, I wanted to stay with, with Jeff forever. Um, I was very loyal and, and very, very grateful to have had the opportunity to, to work with him. I still am to this day. I talk to Jeff all the time. I talked to him for uh, a while yesterday. We were just cutting up over the phone. Um, you know, I think what had happened is my career took off so fast you know, in, in the first year of being a, you know, a licensed, you know, official real estate agent, you know, I did $25 million and then the next year, you know, 35 and the next year, it just kept growing and growing. And, 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 and I didn't, I don't think Jeff expected that type of growth out of me. And, and I barely, ex you know, expected that kind of growth out of myself. So, you know, it just came down to, um, just, just, I, I needed, I, I, I wanted to be, you know, kind of a little bit more in control of um, the direction that I wanted to kind of take things. And, uh, you know, it was a very amicable, um, respectful, I would even say, you know, loving parting of ways. As I mentioned, Jeff is still a very dear friend today. His husband, Dan, is my dentist to this day. I mean, th these, these are very close people to me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I generally am a very attached person and, 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 I, and I don't like change. Um, so uh, the, the, the truthful answer is I, I, never, I never wanted it not, not to work. Um, but, you know, I think Jeff, Jeff was, was always just a, a, a phenomenal uh, person to work with and encouraged me to, you know, to, to spread my wings, which I did. And I'm, I'm grateful that I did. I'm, great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that that opportunity um, you know, happened for me by my own, you know, accord. But um, I think, well, you know, five years of, 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 of working with somebody and, and giving them, you know, everything you've got. And when I tell you, I gave him every single like thing that I had, yeah. I gave it all. 
Yeah. So I think that, that w w what else can you say, but thank you. Right. Well, that's very, I mean, extremely gracious of you and, uh, uh, that is, uh, amicable, but I mean, at this point, now you look at where your career has gone, um, you're doing, uh, extremely high profile, large dollar volume transactions. These are the big, they're, this is like the big boys. And I'm not just, it's not just DC. I mean, you talk about like nationwide, worldwide, these are headline maker transactions. That's, that's really, um, I don't know if that's a focus of yours, but you, this is a business that you do. And so yeah. when, so, so you spent a few years after working with Jeff Wilson, and then you were working on your own as an agent salesperson, building a mm -hmm. team, I assume. Yeah. I, the first thing that I did when, when I left, um, Jeff is I hired a assistant immediately. Mm -hmm. And, um, and actually that assistant that I hired, um, came by way of Jonathan and Trish, um, who were just the most supportive, incredible, um, folks that kind of, you know, lifted me up. Um, in that moment and really gave me the support system that I needed to figure out what the next step was. I remember having my own office and, and then, then, you know, they introduced me to Sarah who used to be Wallace Tut's assistant, right. um, one of our founders here. So well, I'll just yeah, point out for our general audience, uh, when he says Jonathan, he's talking about Jonathan Taylor, one of the owners of the company, Trish, who is, uh, <clears throat> she is a business development and, uh, coach here at our company and, I don't, and Wallace Tutt was a, the Wallace original Tutt. founder, original founder of what is the origin of the company that we work for. So I'm sorry, go ahead. Dan. No. So, so, you know, um, I hired, I hired Sarah and it was really funny because, you know, it's like, um, I, I, I had no management experience. I had never managed anybody before. I had this idea of what I, you know, what I wanted and I just needed somebody to help keep me organized and, and, you know, help write contracts and sort of, um, you know, help me with sort of the technical side of, 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 of the job. Um, and then, you know, from there, I just kind of started to, 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 to grow very organically and very, um, slowly. Mm -hmm. Uh, my, the first, um, hire that I had, was actually a client of mine with no real estate experience um, who I just loved. I, I met her on her front stoop. Um, and she was, you know, probably seven months pregnant with her, with her second daughter. Mm -hmm. And that was Nicole Terry, my senior sales advisor. Wow. Um, and I listed her house and um, became very good friends with her and, and helped them find another house. And she called me one day and she said, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I've, you know, done extremely well in, in, far, in, in uh, medical device sales and, um, I'm thinking of making a switch and I, I, I want to get into real estate, but I, but I'll only do it if I can come and work with you. And so, you know, another kind of moment where I just said, all right, I'll, I'll figure it out. And I hired her and, uh, Jen Tugberg, who's another, uh, sales advisor on my team. I met her organically through, uh, a, dear childhood friend of mine whose mom happens to be a local lender um and uh and she's related to to, to my friend so it's interesting a lot of these folks on my team have they found me right um you know uh, an exception for uh you know justin who i knew you know from the wfp days um and i just kind of sought him out and i said you know i want to work with you right um He's like your CEO. So, Justin is my managing partner. Gotcha. So uh, Justin runs the practice group alongside of me. Um, he has sort of a, an operational um, and and sort of strategic focus when it comes to running CMAs and data and um, <clears throat> client updates and you know all of the important mechanical things that uh, are extremely time consuming, but aren't necessarily, um, you know, uh, my specialty, let's sure. just say I am well, an incredibly asymmetrical person. And just to kind of follow up on that, since we're talking about your group for our listeners that aren't familiar with Hyder, can you kind of break out the group? So you have a partner in Justin and it's interesting. You call it your practice group where he's in charge of the practice. 
Um, it's like a whole different spin on, on the real estate game. And then you have a senior sales advisor. So who else is in the mix here? What are their roles? How many people do you have? Yeah. Um, so we are a total of nine people. Um, actually, I think we're, we may be 10 now. <laughs> Um, uh, as of just recently, like yesterday, go down, I have to go down the list. I have to go down the list. No, no, I, 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 of course I, I'm, I'm deeply invested and I know each, each person, but I'm saying that because we've, right. we've done some shuffling in my marketing. So, yeah. um, so there's myself and Justin DeFranco, who's my managing partner. Um, then there's Allison Waldrip, who's just joined my company or my, my practice group as a, um, as my COO. Um, I've known Allison for 15 years. She basically is, you know, kind of the guardrails on, you know, management of people, management of expenses, management of, um, you know, <laughs> all of all of sort of the growing pains that come along with having an internal scaffolding like I have with with the type of support that we have. Because you'll notice as I go through everybody that I've got, my my team differs greatly from a lot of teams um, in that, you know, we we have few salespeople and we have a lot of support people. Um, and, and so we're very service centric, we're very service heavy. Um, and so going down the line um, on our sales folks, we've got Nicole Terry, uh, Cody McBeth, um, and Jen Tugberg. Um, and then uh, into uh, my most one of my most important positions, which is my my personal assistant and um, uh, sort of client experience coordinator. Uh, that's Sam Maticha. Um, and and then when it comes to marketing, I've got three people now: mm -hmm. um, Ali, Sean, and very recently, as of just a couple uh, days ago, uh, Maddie Cantala Mesa. So. Um, that's, that's my team. That's awesome. And I'm just curious, going back to your earlier comment, do you have to train them through the hype man? You mentioned you, you were the hype man for Jeff Wilson. So they have to go through and learn to hype up Hyder across the luckily, board on all platforms. No, luckily for me, I've done enough hyping on, on <laughs> my own that, I, I, that, that, there's, that there's so much hype that the, yeah. the hype actually overflows. And I need people who can, who, 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 who can, who can catch. Chill it back. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Harness the hype. Exactly. So, exactly. so that's what, yeah, I was going to, that's the next idea I have here is that, so you're, you were Daniel Hyder working on just doing your real estate business and now you've moved on to Hyder as a much more definitive brand it's your last name obviously but mm -hmm. it is like that is the branding for the mm -hmm. way that you do your listings and everything else that you do you know it's it's very mm -hmm. strongly uh it's it's aggressive and it looks fantastic and it's and it's your name which is great too so when did you make the decision that this is we're going from daniel Hyder, the real estate agent and the broker to being Hyder, this sort of larger entity idea i i wanted to do it as soon as possible you know right when i started you know my own thing i wanted to be Hyder. Mm -hmm. um and 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 you know it's interesting now i see sir hant right yeah and now right? i see and now That's i, what I and, and, and 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 it, and 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 it's and it's funny because you know look i i've always seen a big part of um you know a big opportunity in 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 the washington you know real estate market to stand out yeah. right and there's always and 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 again um you know no no offense to anybody who has a a group or a you know i i didn't want to be branded like everybody else sure that's the whole point I wanted to stand out. I wanted right. to make sure that when people that people knew that they were dealing with something different, and you know, um, and 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 when, uh, you know, for for years and years and years, as I started to kind of plan out the future for what my group would look like, you know, I had invested heavily into my my website development, my you know, my, I, I have my own typography, licensed right. typography. You yeah. can't use, you can't use my typography, right? I mean, it's, it's mine. I very I much own... like Daniel, I've really tried to figure it out too. I'm like, I, I like, 
I, I'm sure I could hire a graphic designer to, to figure it out, but it's like, it's real. Like I said, it's really strong. It, it looks awesome. And it's, Thank you. it's, it, it comes across like exactly the way that you need it to. And it works. It's amazing. The whole, the, 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 the whole point is, you know, I want people who hire um, us to recognize that they're hiring um, something different. And how can I stand on my own two feet in selling the best marketing that I feel, you know, is represented here in this area. If, if my, if, if my own, you know, if, 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 if I can't speak for my, if I can't speak for myself and my own value proposition, how could I ever speak to anyone else's? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it is really, and, and, and by the way, when I developed the Hyder brand and as I was working with, you know, uh, a, a full team of people from, uh, a, a very good friend of mine to a company that I hired on the West Coast and and was really deep in the weeds of you know my logos and and what I wanted to communicate to the world. I did it in a way that was also paying homage and respect to the Sotheby's International Realty brand. Right. Um, you know, I wanted I, I I love navy. If you can't tell, um, I, it's my favorite color. So I, I definitely wanted kind of the base to be navy. Um, but I wanted uh, I, I wanted my sort of, you know, metal accent to be copper. I'm getting too technical with you right now. No, I love this. Um, this is but 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 great. but the thing is, is that, you know, what it is, is it's consistency. And I have my own brand guidelines. So, you know, you're never going to see inconsistencies in mailers or the way that I express myself on social media. We express ourselves on, on social media because everything is already figured out. I've already invested yeah. into that. Yeah. Right. It's a lot of work. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. impressive. It really is. Especially coming Thank from you. a group that we have, like, you know, we, we look up to you, you have a, a really good group and it's like, and you've, you know, we started before you, you came after us and you've just blown through the water. Uh, it's impresses what, what you've done and what you've built. And it's now you've kind of set the bar high for Very everybody high. else, whether it's a single Good. agent or even a team. Of Good. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. No, no, no. I mean that, I mean that, I mean that because I think when, when people in life come along, whether it's they, they they have a different style, you know, maybe they, maybe, maybe they dress a little differently or they express a viewpoint that's, striking you know it gives others permission to do the same thing right you know it, it it helps expand people right and it helps expand business and that's the whole point i mean i have said this many times for so long you know there has been so much mediocrity passed off in our industry so much you know from from the print collateral to the way that people are you know, interacting with their clients or prospective clients or the way that they host an open house or the way that they walk someone through a property or the way that they speak to their fellow colleagues, right? It yeah. all needed to be elevated. Reworked. All of it. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. All of it. And and so and so, you know, I I I take pride in the details. I I th that that's what I I, I kind of live for. Um, and, 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 you know, we just want to, we want to create an experience for not only our clients, but for ourselves within my team and for people that, that, that we have the, you know, fortune of interacting with yeah. fellow agents, our corporate leadership, you know, we want to, we want to stand out. You, and you do. And it, 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 that's, that's, that's why we're here. We're talking <laughs> to you today because we, like we're, I want to, we're want to learn more and hopefully some of this mojo will rub off on us. Exactly. Exactly. I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm an open book and I, I want, I want to help. So cool. whatever I can do. Well, all right. So I wanted to ask you about the, um, let's, so let's talk about some of this marketing stuff that you do. Uh, it's no secret what it appears like after you've done all the work, but I'm really interested what inspired you to start the marketing collaborations with like you have supermodels and expensive mm -hmm. cars in your videos. And I, I'm sure that's been done before, but probably not in our market. Our market has been known to be a little more conservative than say your uh, Miami or Manhattan or uh, Southern California. Like Mar wait, has it been done before? I mean, that's the question though. I mean, like yeah, Daniel, I mean, you can ask this, but I mean like I know, listen, in our market though, but what was it? How the did board? you get to this point of use of doing all this? You know, I, I see opportunity and, and, and I, I, I think big and, you know, and I see in vignettes and I see in, 
you know, um, in, in, in the possibilities of, of how something can be, you know, accentuated. And, um, you know, look, I, I'm, I know so many incredible people that are so talented. Um, and sometimes you, you just get these kind of aha moments where you're like, hey, you know, I mean, like this whole situation with uh, Kingsley models, I have, an, I have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. You know, what folks don't realize is that, you know, what you see today in, in some of our, our social media collateral is really the, the effects of a 15 year long relationship. Right. That relationship started when I was 17 years old working a retail job. And I used to sneak up to the first salon at Saks Fifth Avenue in Tyson's Galleria. And I saw this unbelievably jaw dropping woman who was so chic and had the most amazing hair and was like so electric and she was so sweet to me. And you know, and and I and I was always smitten by her, and I bring her a coffee, and I would say hi to her, and we would just kind of like kick it a little bit, you know. I just just in passing, and you know that that's Joy Kingsley, and and now she runs the top modeling agency in Washington, yeah. and you know Anastasia Vakula, my you know my my model who uh, you know has been featured you know all over our our, our TikTok and Instagram, you know she is very uh, she actually lives directly across the street from my office in Georgetown and before i met her i would see this incredible woman on a skateboard with a bulldog hmm. and i would say to justin and i would say to people in in my office like i, I love who, her who is that <laughs> yeah like i don't know her but i i love her and so one of my best friends oxenia who's from ukraine we're in miami and she's like Dearling, I need to teach you. I need to show you my friend. She wants to have dinner with us tonight. And, you know, I, I go to the restaurant downstairs and it's her. It's the lady on, on the skateboard, the skateboard wow. with the bulldog. And, and, and so, you know, look, I, really, guys, it's, I listen, I, I, hear, I, heard yeah, this I, hear quote, I heard this quote the other day. It was, and I'm probably going to butcher it. I'm not going to get it right, but. It was a quote from Ralph Lauren, and uh, somebody asked somebody was asking him a question. You know, how does a um, how does a uh, you know a poor Jewish boy from the Bronx get to be sort of the you know um, the icon of of preppy fashion? And he answered, and he said, it has way more to do with dreams than it has to do with you know going to Cornell and 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 coming from you know a uh, a family of stockbrokers, and and that's I, I I think that's applicable to me. I think that when you dream about something, and when you just want to be, when you just that action alone, just wanting to do something different, you know, you you start to get these little whispers and little inklings of you know little pieces to the puzzle. Well, and then it all fits there's creativity together. here. You know, yeah. you're putting these things like you're putting these things together in your mind. You're like, what if I did? What if I tried this? Not, sure. not even really try. It's more the idea comes to you and you're doing it. It's not a concept anymore. It's happening. Yeah. And 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 now, you know, at this point, um, uh, it's just it's it's trying to figure out, you know, the best way to capture the energy of a of a listing. Right. Or, you know, how, how to communicate that this is, you know, a fantastic place and to grab the attention and to keep the attention centered on, you know, what I'm trying to sell, mm -hmm. which are houses. Right. <laughs> right. Let's not forget that. Right. Yeah. So sliding over a little bit, were you doing the videos and the modeling and the cars before TikTok or because then you have mm -hmm. a huge following on TikTok. I mean, you're a TikTok superstar. Uh, so did they? You know, what's the correlation there? I started, I started doing video marketing immediately. I was thinking about my very first video that I did, ever did. And, and I hired because there was nobody that was in the space that was doing it, you know, like there is now. Now there's, you know, so many fabulous people. But, you know, I, I hired a friend of mine who is this super artsy a uh, guy from Miami named Annie, Andy, um, and I had a listing at Turnberry Tower, and um, and I remember 
you know, I hired him and, and I wanted him to add animated text over top of it. And I'll have to go back in my Instagram, like all the way at the bottom yeah. to find that video. Um, but, but I had, I, I remember posting it and getting so many people, so many people reaching out and saying, wow, that unit is incredible. That video was amazing. The music was awesome. Mm -hmm. And so I started investing in video for every single one of my listings. If it was $250,000, right. it got a video. You got to get a video. If it was, if it, it, no matter what it was, it got a video. And so when TikTok came around, I was sitting on an arsenal of of, of what has been the, confirmed yeah yep. yeah what 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 has been confirmed by a very prominent videographer who who a lot of us use as having the most amount of video footage of anybody in the area and so i'm like what am i going to do with this how am i going to repurpose this how am i going to up the ante yes you know and 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 so you know i like, like i said to you i i i kind of have like a not kind of i have a cinematic vision i listen to a song i can i i i start my marketing wheels start spinning, you know, or I see something that inspires me and I can see how that can maybe, you know, fit into how I'm expressing, you know, what a certain house is, right? Mm -hmm. And not every house is the same. I'm not pulling a, you know, mirrored purple Lamborghini into the pea gravel drive of a, you know, colonial center hall house in, <laughs> in, in McLean. Like that's not the vibe, right? Yeah. And, but, but, um, you know, I mean, it's it's fun. It's just it's a it way that I get I get to a, kind of yeah. It's cool. creatively it's fun. yeah. No it, doubt. It's fun. And not to go down the TikTok road, but if, a couple of follow up questions. I mean, are you or your team doing the TikTok videos and the uploading, or do you have another team outside of your own team? Everything is done in house. So everything that we do, we do, except for. Um, if we're taking professional property video, like for instance, I have a listing in Charlottesville. Um, you know, if, if I, if I break that video down, that was all shot with professional drones sure. and professional cameras, I'm, I'm breaking that down, speeding it up, dubbing over a different song. And, and that would be, you know, more of a professional sort of edit, but all of the editing is done in house. Um, but most, the large majority of what we post on TikTok is all taken on an iPhone 12. That's, that's what I've been telling people. The same yeah. thing. It's if people are like, Oh, are you using this gimbal or using that? I'm like, no, no, Matt, I want to just give you, if we can just we turn go. this around for a minute. No, no. I want to just give you some real props because first of all, the reason why a lot of people don't have social media channels, like now I can comfortably say we do is because it is absolutely a full-time job. If you want to have yeah. the presence, if it, you 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 have to create the content, you have to edit it, you know, it has to be done right. And Max, you do such a wonderful job in your immersive tours. I like the sound of your voice. I think that's that why you're, you're on the you're, podcast, right? Truly, so you can hear truly, my voice truly, right now. No, 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 truly, truly. You, 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 you are really good. And you know what? You're the first person that really got cracking after, you know, what, what was kind of a, a big splash in the DC, you know, sort of real estate space with, 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 with our own account. But I commend you for that. And listen, it pays to be an early adopter. You've Absolutely. got hundreds of thousands of followers yourself. So, well, you know, no, no, kudos no, to I'm in the 20, <laughs> 20 something thousand, but definitely in the hundreds of thousands of likes, no question that people are yeah. seeing it for sure. And I, I, but can I just stop you for a minute? I want, it. and I don't know if you think of, I don't know if you think of this often, but have you ever quantified how many people 20,000 people is? Have you ever figured yeah. out like like how many people fit in that stadium? Yeah, of course. I and think then, about stadiums all the time. I love sports. Right? So yeah, 20,000 right? people is like the Capital One Arena basically. Yeah. So yeah. so what is so so in today's in today's modern world, mm -hmm. what is a more relevant way to advertise than on social media? There isn't. Right? You are there not isn't. you're not putting a mailer together and you're not, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not taking an ad out in a magazine that's reaching as many people as you and I can when we post one thing. Daniel, you're not. so, well, okay. Uh, obviously, I'm going to get to the next question, but um, the, uh, what you're saying is absolutely true. 
and let's say you put a mailer together, which we do for our listings. We want we mm -hmm. getting in people's mailboxes is still a very classic real estate thing. You're, you're, they pick it up, they see the name, they see the branding, they're like, cool, and then they throw it out. Whatever. Mm -hmm. but sometimes they they see it and they actually think about it and maybe give you a call. It, that would be sure. awesome if that happens. But um, think about the cost of just doing one mailer. I mean, obviously you have to get the photography and all that, and you have to print it. It has to be sent first class mail. It's mm -hmm. hundreds of dollars to send one mailer yeah. easily, easily. Thousands sometimes. Well, thousands if you're, yeah, depending yeah. on the size and where it's right. going. For one TikTok, okay, of your listing that you already have or a, a listing that you've had, if you want to shoot a new TikTok or just reuse the uh, old uh, video that you already have, you can, can, you can edit it differently. You can use different music. You can do another walkthrough. You can use a voiceover. This stuff mm -hmm. is practical. Once you have the assets, which you can film yourself on the iPhone 12 Pro, great plug for that uh, device, it's, you, it's almost free. And you're just it putting is. it on the platform and just let it roll in. It's crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And people, and people love it. And I found that, you know, they really the more organic it is, the more likes you get, Absolutely. you know, I, it, it's like, you know, don't, don't, um, actually, I, I think, uh, some early advice that I got from, from Trish Yan at our, our company, um, was like, you know, it's like you, 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 you can't be too much of a perfectionist because you'll never get no. anything done. You know, That's like right. you have to, you have to That's practice. Great advice. You just got to get some stuff out there. Got to push it out. Keep it moving. Definitely. Just a quick question, and then we can go on to the next question. A question before the question. Uh, the question before the question. That's my uh, my my roots there growing up from West Virginia. I have three questions before the real question. Anyway, my question is, how do you get, we have like 2.5 or 3 million 3 followers. Million. It's insane. Like. 3.2. Yeah. Yeah. It goes up quickly. <laughs> no, not that, not that I'm counting or no, not that you're it, looking like, in erotically, but like, yeah. how do you get to 3.2? I mean, like I don't get into TikTok that much, but I'm like, it's just impressive that you have 3.2 million followers. You, that's become, more than like Kim Kardashian, I think is I have 3.2 million. You, you become, you, you become obsessed with the possibilities that are in your grasp when you get the opportunity to list some of the most unbelievable and fanciful sure. properties in the area, yeah. you know? And so, yes, sure. You could take brilliant photos and put it on the MLS or right. You could hire a drone to capture the perspective of this massive home yeah. and not only shoot it during the day, but shoot it at night right. and take it a step further where you get a seamless transition from day to night yeah, and a have one. a beautiful carpool in and then and then a gorgeous woman come out of it and walk you through the house. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like, do you want the grilled cheese or do you want to have the, you know, the the 48 day, you know, aged right. ribeye from, you know, Snake River Farms and yeah, you know, I mean like yeah. it's like it's it's just it's just a no brainer. Well, it's like and, yeah. and dare people and not also, to, dare people not to look at this. And also, I will tell you that um, maybe I'm maybe I'm just biased, uh, but I think for six percent of the average homeowner's equity to be paid as a marketing fee and negotiation fee to a real estate agent. I think that they deserve everything, the full shebang. Yeah. Right. The video, the 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 obsessive compulsive post editing, the beautiful copywriting. I mean, we spend so oh, much no time on this stuff. I mean, that's the thing is that it, it it's not easily duplicated because it costs a ton of money and it takes a ton of time. Right. So so unless there are folks that are going to be willing to 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 effectively do more, things are going to stay the same. Right. Right. And we're at we're at we're at the best luxury firm in Washington. You know, we 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 get the the good fortune of stepping into people's lives and 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 you know getting to preside over one of the most important financial transactions of most people's lives and i feel like you can do that in a way that's artistic and is fun and and creates a buzz and and helps the whole process out you know you know I, we might get might get 45 minutes of a prospective purchaser's time when we're showing a large scale home, right, mm -hmm. Max? Mm -hmm. Maybe 45 minutes. Sure. 
if you have a custom website and a beautifully edited video and gorgeous photos, when you're considering buying a house, when most folks are considering buying a house, you know, wouldn't you want to control what their post visit experience is by, by, by you yeah. literally lording over every single shot, every single word, every single transition. Like I am in full control of, of who experiences my listings and how they experience them. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so when they're sending it to their, their, their brother and their uncle and their mom and their dad, right. The experience that those folks are having is, oh my God, this is so beautiful. This is stunning. Right. I don't want, I don't want the experience to be, oh, there's a light bulb missing there, or there's a dead boxwood in that <laughs> line. Oh, there's a, there's right. a, there's a, there's right. like a, like a round brown patch there. Like, no, no, no. My clients will always get that royal treatment because I, quite frankly, am so neurotic and so OCD that it just doesn't you can't happen take any it. other way. You can't handle it. Yeah. Just, it won't happen. Well, one thing I can say for sure is that hearing in your voice, your passion on quality definitely comes through. And it's yeah. easy to see why people hire you on the spot. Even going back to when you're 24 and you won over two people, right? Not even the seller, but somebody referred you to the seller, right? So that's two in right out mm -hmm. of the gate. I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to, to come from, a, you know, a really great family, um, and, and people gave me, you know, people gave me opportunity, you know, I mean, I ha I've had so many people say, you know, you, you know, you're, you're a self-made guy. I am not a self-made guy. I am. None of us are self-made. There's no such thing as self-made. Right. When you are delivered as a baby in the hospital, there's a team of, of people waiting for you when you come out to wash you, to cut your umbilical cord, right? To put the little bonnet on your head, right? To make sure that you're sleeping well, to make sure that you're getting milk, right? And from the time that you're a child, you are, there are things happening in your life. And, 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 and so I've just been, you know, the very fortunate recipient of good fortune and a lot of early trust, um, which, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of people like Jeff and Jason. Yeah. I mean, that's the truth. So I think my, this question that I had was answered through everything that we've talked about today, um, because it comes through in your voice, in your passion, uh, and also learning more about, for example, the, the models, like how you met these people and they, who they are in your life who they were before. It's not like you just went out and said, I need models. I'm going to go like interview these people. Like these are people you knew, but you know, in your social media, your Instagram, your personal Instagram, we see all kinds of crazy stuff. Like we see expensive cars, helicopter rides, luxury brands, the most expensive meals, super first class flying, not just like first class, like beyond premier class. So do you do this because this is what people now expect of you from all of these things or does it get exhausting? But tell us more about like that life and this is your day to day thing. I mean, this is what you're doing. No, no. You know, I'm I, I still live in a dream. You know, I mean, <laughs> I used to drive a Toyota Prius and I couldn't afford the two hundred and forty dollar a month car note. So yeah. <laughs> every day that I get to wake up. And, and, yeah. and have options is a good day. You know, um, it doesn't get exhausting. You know, you, what, what you may see or what one may see as an expensive meal or a lavish helicopter yeah. can also be viewed by others. And, 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 and certainly the intention of me is to, you know, is to experience a property in a way that nobody else would ever be able to, you know, provide. Right. Right. Or, 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 you know, I mean, if, if I am excited about ha having a fabulous meal, you know, it's, it's, it's maybe it's the story of, of the, of the chef or it's the quality of the ingredients or it's how artfully it's been put together. You know, I, I, I can be looked at as being expensive. Yes. But, but I think the, the, the intended vibration of it is, is to say, wow, this is beautiful. Or wow, like this is art. Sure. Or you know, this is this this, this you know, I right. I I like fabulous things, and I like you know, 
luxury because it helps me um, recharge. But but I also enjoy just as much as I enjoy you know a first class flight or you know getting having the good fortune of being on one of my friends' planes or whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. I, I I also enjoy like taking my dog into you know the park and watching him bolt after a squirrel. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 like listening to a great piece of music. You know, yeah. I mean, or picking crabs with my family. I mean, it's, it's. Uh, you know, I think the most powerful thing that 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 people have is their smartphone. And today, you are who you show people you are. And unfortunately, a lot of folks kind of have misconstrued. Um, uh, perceptions of maybe who I am as a person because cumulatively they've maybe maybe seen a couple hours of my life in a whole right you know um so yeah you know I I I do have a deep affinity for uh things that are special and things that are rare and things that are uncommon and things that are comfortable and things that make sense and things that are easier and things that 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 make you feel better I do yeah. And and I'm not ashamed of it, and I'm proud of it, and I've made it, and I give it, and and I live in it, and I provide it. And you know, I when I worked in the restaurant industry, um, I loved, I, I loved that you know most industry people, you know, these are people that on their free time, they go to the best restaurants. Sure. Yeah, they experience what that service is that they give every day, right? I do the same thing. There's no difference. Well, I, I, I just want to say though, what it goes beyond just you. You know, people see things and they see what you might be doing or what anyone else is doing, and they say, "Oh, they spent a lot of money on that, and that's ridiculous." But it's, mm -hmm. it's just the that's just one aspect of it. The price tag. People get obsessed over this stuff in our world. Sure. And in every, it's it's just some. It's just the way people are. They look at something and they go like, "What? That's crazy." But sure. there's people behind all of it. Absolutely. It's I mean, listen, most people would look at my, you know, trips to the to, to the Emirates where I'm flying, you know, the A380 first class Emirates, and they have no idea, okay, no idea that I have never once, ever, ever paid for a first class fr flight on Emirates. Never once. Right. Not once in my life. I just came back from Paris, and I didn't pay for anything, nothing. Not the flight, not the hotel, not the restaurants, not the chauffeur, nothing. Yeah. You know, I, I was a guest. You know, I, I not to say that I don't do wonderful things for myself. I certainly do. But, you know, I mean, I'm I'm like gaming the point system to get into that first class sure. lounge, you, right? Like, yeah. like I'm like buying the business class, you know, ticket months in advance and then upgrading myself on like the Emirates app at the last Must minute. Say, yeah. Like, 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 you know, and 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 you know, does it matter how it happens? No, because, you know, I mean, it's not. the, yeah, it's, 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 it's the, it's the experience. Absolutely. And, um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, as much as that stuff is great, I'm just as happy. Like, honestly, I'm either, you know, really dressed up or I'm in like shorts and a t-shirt and, you know, and sandals. Like I, I, Believe it or not, I, 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 like, I like simple things too. I like being around people that I love and I love doing great things for them. So whenever I get the opportunity, I do that. But occasionally, maybe you could just post something about, you know, the credit you had to negotiate for like a broken <laughs> toilet or something yes. and just bring us back down to reality. Just Absolutely. maybe once in a while. You know, I, I'd be, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. I mean, look, we go through, we go, we go through, we, we, we go through that every day. You know, and that's the thing is that is that I think the beauty of 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 my practice group and my business is that, you know, yes, of course, we have the headline sales. We've got some really fabulous listings and we've got you know, great attention. But, you know, we have an incredible range. You know, I, I, I'm I'm just as an effective agent selling at Atlantic Plumbing as I am selling in McLean as I am selling in Potomac, as I am selling in Bethesda. And, and, and that's just it, right? I mean, I, I wouldn't want to, to only sell, you know, single family homes in the suburbs. That would be like working at Bergdorf Goodman and only selling shoes. Mm -hmm. like, I want it all. 
I want to sell it all. I want to apply. I want to apply a thought process to everything. And really, it's never. It's never really just property driven. It's. It. It is all, most certainly people driven. Driven. And, and as successful and as big as the numbers are for this year, the things that I'm most proud of this year. It, it, it's it has it's not the sales it's it's in a lot of the things that i didn't do it's in the lessons that i've learned it's in the you know the the recognition of of meeting someone and maybe getting the sense that you know they're not realistic and it's not it's not a good it's not a good use of your time to take something on yeah. or 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 you know um in 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 just just just, just, just growing, you know, I, I feel like that, that's the, that's the biggest kind of, um, win recently is, is, is just seeing in myself the things that I am no longer willing to do. Right. Yeah, and that doesn't mean, that. that doesn't mean, you know, I'm not willing to take on listings that are under a certain dollar, you know, threshold. That means that there are people that I am no longer, I am no longer willing to expend my energy for sure um because they just don't you know and i don't know how else to say this without sounding you know brash but don't deserve it I, got and a, I, I just won't do it there's a book out there we just finished reading with our group it's called the not doing list and it's knowing when to say no and it's by alexander mm-hmm. bant who is a local author so if you haven't read it it's worth checking I'd out you, maybe you should write I'd the book to. yourself no, no, I'm, 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 I'm definitely still learning here. I mean, it's, it's, as you guys know, I mean, you, you, you feel like you've seen it all and, and, and then you know, some, something else happens, uh, every day. you know, every day. Um, and we're involved in, you know, solving problems all day, every day for people and, and being, you know, the shepherds of, you know, sometimes really challenging situations in people's lives, be it financially or you know health wise sure. um dealing with sensitive information yeah. and so we can talk about the cinematic movies all day long but what got me here guys was not a tiktok channel or an instagram feed what got me here that is the cornerstone of my business today are the people who gave me the opportunity and continuously breed more opportunity for me by way of introducing other folks to us and you know, that's, that's something that we've never taken our eye off of, you know, thanking people, being in touch with people, making sure that we're always, um, you know, grounded and, 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 and present and, and, you know, um, grateful for existing in a marketplace like Washington. There's so much to be in thankful for. Would you think about leveraging your social media content or your social media followers? Oh. Go ahead. Um, we're like, we're hot. Let's go ask one more question. Okay. I mean, would you, we are high on time and I, I have to bounce okay. in a second. And I just, and, and like, if you want to go to the question, that's fine. I mean, obviously we have, it'll be a quick and, one. And, you know, we have fantastic stuff. Thank you so much. This is really good. I mean, really, really great stuff. Yes. Um, thank you. So we'll do um, one more we, and then wrap it up. Yeah. Five. One more and then wrap. And then, yeah. Yeah. So, so Daniel, with your huge social media following, would you ever consider, or maybe you've been approached to leverage your following into like a TV show, like your own Bravo show? Cause you're much more to me interesting than Ryan Frederick or Josh flag. No. Thank you for saying that. I actually, I love, I love Josh flag and I love Frederick. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I was approached a couple of times. Um, most recently uh, by a, a, a studio and, you know, look, I, like I said, Maybe I'm getting in my own way and not listening to Trisha's advice. Um, but, uh, you know, the first thing I did is when I got that talent agreement is I sent it to my attorney and, you know, we redlined it, you know, and, and, I, and I sent it right back. And I, I'm sure that that, you know, probably scared them a little bit. But let me just tell you, if I am going to be involved in a show, it's going to be like the... Um, the Kardashians and not in the, not in the content of the Kardashians, but in the way that I will be in control of how it is produced uh, and what it is said. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be fodder for, you know, throwing wine on people's faces. And, uh, you know, that I, 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 so I'm very sensitive about protecting myself in that way, but I appreciate you uh, saying that. And I have been approached now a couple of times. Yep. 
All right, well, let's hit him with some rapid fire questions. Rapid five, five easy, easy questions for you here. All favorites. What's your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show is Succession right now. Yeah, love Succession. Succession. Okay. Your favorite clothing designer. You mentioned Ralph Lauren earlier. Mm-hmm. Yep, Ralph. Nice. I love Ralph Lauren. Your favorite restaurant in the DMV inside DC, Maryland, or Virginia? I know you're a foodie. <sighs> That's so tough. Yeah, you got to be careful here. Yeah, oh heard somebody's feeling. I mean, I, I I have to choose one. Like you have to give me, you have, you have to give me a um uh, uh like a a, a a a you know like a genre. I feel like well, uh, what's your favorite Italian? Yeah, there. Favorite, go fa- to your favorite, roots. A, favorite Italian mm-hmm. is definitely going to be any Fabio Trabocchi restaurant. Fabio, cool. I love you. Awesome. <laughs> Outside of DC, what's your favorite city? Um. Hmm. Uh, Rome. Rome. Nice. I know you love luxury hotels. What's your favorite one? <sighs> That's a hard one too. Um, You've seen a few lately. Probably uh, Hotel du Cap um, in Cap d'Antibes in in south of France. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful. Well, Daniel, really great stuff. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and sharing everything with us. Uh, Just great enthusiasm. And like I said, we're always watching you and learning from you. And uh, you have absolutely done what you set out to do is raise the bar here in real estate in general and in the DC area and worldwide. Fantastic. And thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. As a thank you, I just want to pop in for a second. Uh, We would like to make a contribution to a local... um, uh, 501c3 of your choice, oh. whatever is special, uh, near and dear to you, please let thank us you know so- either now thank or you. later. Yeah, um, one- thank you so Bye. much, guys. You guys are a really classy bunch. And um, uh, I commend you for taking time out of your work days. I mean, this is a, this is a big effort for, for guys like you that have a lot to manage and a lot of people to answer to. So I know my phone is blowing up. I'm sure yours is too. I can do not feel disturb. it vibrating. I can't, I can't like even look down. It's like literally ringing as we, yeah. uh, sure. as we, as we speak. Um, um, but guys, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And um, uh, I'd love to um, direct that uh, contribution to um, the folks at Together We Bake. Together We Bake. Thanks for listening to Keyed In with your hosts, Max and Brent, unlocking the minds of the industry's top real estate professionals. For more information on selling your home, find us online at keyedinpodcast.com. Remember to subscribe to Keyed in on Apple Podcasts or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at Keedin Podcast, at Raven Max, and at Brent E. Jackson. And follow Max on TikTok at Maxwell Rabin underscore properties. Oh, 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 oh.